<laughs> Rolling with the punches. Sharon Horn Nelson here. Also known as Pajama Grandma with day 781 of What's She Up To Now? Documenting the journey from and during my transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of, of um, working with some of the biggest corporations in the world and uh, on the planet to running my own businesses, which I did sort of on the side the whole time I was working in corporate America. I'm trying to think. I think... Jesus, pretty much the whole time I was in corporate America, the first year that I was out of college and working for Procter & Gamble, making toilet paper! Yes, people, toilet paper. We will be able to get toilet paper. Uh, to, I've had a business, I had a business on the side. And then in 2004, I split off and I left corporate America. I was laid off when my company was sold for the last time, for I say the last time, because that's the last corporate job I had. And since then, I have been running my own businesses in a bunch of different industries. I counted up a while ago and I've been in at least 27 different businesses and industries in my career. Now, it's been a long one, right? I've been in business for 47 years. And I like to think I don't look that old, but I definitely look that old. <laughs> and today I wanna to talk about rolling with the punches. And why do I wanna talk about rolling with the punches? Well, primarily because that was the idiom I talked about my Super Size Your Business video earlier. But it's really applicable to what's going on right now in the world and if this is an unprecedented time I mean nothing never in my lifetime in my 60 years have I seen anything like this and I like to hope that I will never see anything like this again that we're learning from the situation and we're adjusting and adapting and of course we'll survive but but how will we come out nobody knows how we'll come out or how long it will take and that requires that we be flexible and we roll with the punches but as I'm thinking about rolling with the punches I think it's really important that we remember that we have to focus on our personal current situation and finding solutions for that. So often we get carried away and we kind of live vicariously, not always in a positive way, but vicariously through other people in a negative way. And we don't necessarily realize that, that it's impacting us. If we watch the media, if we're looking for all the stories of, of doom and gloom and how horrible it is and how bad it is in other places, we're that's impacting us whether we know it or not. I, I'm not watching the media, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, but then I haven't watched the media since the 1980s when I went through a training when I learned to make toilet paper at Procter & Gamble, it's one of the best trainings and one of, got me on my lifelong learning journey. Uh, although I'd always liked training and learning things, uh, that's what really started me on this massive um, continuous improvement and learning journey was a training called Louis Tice training. And we were challenged during that training for one week to turn off our televisions and not watch TV for the entire week. See, I've been doing challenges a long time, even before then, but that, that was one. But we were challenged for a week to turn off the television and not watch the news or listen to the radio. And back then we didn't have the internet, if you can imagine that. Um, and it stuck with me. It stuck that number one, I had so much more time and energy. I felt more positive about the world and about my circumstances. So I, I quit watching it back then. So now I get little reports here and there, but for the most part, I am not focusing on other people's stories and what's going on in other parts of the world. And I'm not doing that from, I guess I am doing that from a selfish standpoint. I know that if I focus on what I can do, I focus on my situation, that this tool shall pass faster and better and I'll have a better impact on my family and those I love and care about than if I am worried about every toilet paper shortage, if I'm worried about every, um, place that's having more deaths, if I'm worried about the possibility of hospital beds not being enough. Now, I will tell you that the universe and universal laws, and this is pretty woo-woo for a lot of people, how it works, everyone, is our collective consciousness creates what we think it's going to create. So if we are all watching the news and all the stories about how terrible this is going to be and millions of people are going to die and there's never going to be enough hospital beds and, and other, you know, all these bad doom and gloom things, guess what we're all creating? We're all adding energy to that story. But if we all do what we know we can to improve the situation, hey, get away from each other. Let's do social distancing. It's not going to kill us. Guess what? In this connected world of the internet, Social distancing, okay, so we're not physically with somebody, but you can be with people all the time. You can use Zoom, you can use your phone, almost everybody's got a cell phone, and we can do video calling and video conferencing. I remember feeling left out for a long time because a lot of my family has iPhone products and iProducts, right? I do not have iProducts. I always have had Android. 
and you know some of us when we're older we we stick with what we know so I've always had Android well Android has had video calling for a long time now so we might have not have FaceTime but we still have video calling Facebook calling you can do Facebook video calling I don't know if people know that but you can hop on Facebook and you can actually see one another and I've been coaching that way for a couple of years secret is out um, meeting with people on Facebook video calling and video conferencing um, there are so many solutions out there and it's time we started looking for what is possible and focusing on what we can do not on what we can't right and continuing to focus on our current situation and not making it worse by looking at, at what else is going on in the world. Now, some people are in super dire situations. I understand that. I know, and we all know, so many people that are out of work right now. So many people that are forced, and not forced, but are home with their kids. And that, now, I wanna erase that language because yes, we have been forced to be home with our kids, but we can look at it as being forced and something miserable or we can look at it as a huge opportunity to spend time with amazing people in our lives and to get to know them that we otherwise never would have gotten. Let's be honest, our world was on this fast-paced collision course to disconnection anyway, right? It, it totally was. Um, social media is awesome in some ways, but it has made us more disconnected and more disjointed and less of a community than ever. It has focused on the negative and built on the negative, kind of like the news media. and made our world kind of a negative scary place and, and this to me look, feels like an adjustment feels like kind of a universal energy adjustment is it a really hard wake-up call absolutely but I guess I can kind of relate because I I feel like my life has gone through a similar set of circumstances I have had health challenges the majority of my life I usually don't talk about them but it's kind of a good place to talk about them. Um, from the time I was a little kid, I had a lot of little illnesses and infections and um, challenges. I, I And I was kind of a klutz and accident prone. I ripped open my mouth when I was two, cracked my head open when I was three. Um, and it, it kind of went downhill from there, right? But I always had tonsillitis, laryngitis, throat issues and things like that. So even my granddaughter says, Grandma, don't sing. Please don't sing. And for some reason, the last couple of days I've been singing. And she's like, stop, please stop. And she puts her little hands over her ears and closes her eyes and shakes her head. And I'm like, okay, I forget I'm singing. It's pretty much like a rusty gate hinge. Pretty pretty miserable, pretty bad. Uh, but I focus on what I can do, not on what I can't do. I can't sing, so I do things I like to do, like cook. I love to cook. Uh, and so actually... This, this forced downtime, this forced change, this forced looking at our personal situations and looking in the mirror and figuring out what can I do? What can I do to make this situation better? What can I do to make my family's um, getting through this better and easier? I mean, I am with a four-year-old every day and I'm gonna make darn sure that her routine, our routine, is, is pretty much the same. The only thing that's different is she's not going to school for three hours a day. For parents and that are home with their kids and older kids, each age is gonna have its own challenges, right? I mean, teenagers, God, I feel for you because I remember my kids as teenagers when they had a gazillion activities. What do you do now with all that pent up energy? But you challenge them to come up with creative solutions of what they can do. You don't keep having them get together with their friends. That is not social distancing, right? Um, and it's irresponsible and it will actually contribute negatively to this challenge. So my challenge to you is find ways to positively use that energy, but make sure that you are taking care of yourself and focusing on what you can do and being a positive influence on, on them as well. So rolling with the punches, that's just my little thought about that today. Um, and guess what? We've all been through challenges before. If we can think about what worked for us in challenges in the past and apply that to the current situation, we'll all figure this out. We will absolutely positively all figure this out. And although it feels super duper painful, I guarantee that on the other side of this, we will all be better people. We'll definitely be better, I, okay. We'll, we'll be better human beings if we stop watching things on Netflix like Contagion or, con, was it Contagion? I can't remember. There's all kinds of shows on Netflix that <laughs> have to do with the end of the world. Don't watch that stuff. Watch positive things, watch comedies, watch, you know, things that are um, things you can learn from on the internet and on on the television or on whatever media you choose. Don't, you know, don't watch hours and hours and hours of what's going on in the world. Um, 
it's like whenever anything bad in the world happens. I remember 9-11. 9-11 is the only time I recall actually watching a little bit of the news and, and really watching it for an extended period of time. And I think that's because we were so shocked and horrified and in awe of what had happened that the entire nation sort of stopped. Um, but then after that, <clears throat> we imme immediately, we immediately at work switched to solutions um, and figured out what do we need to do based on this? What can we do moving forward? And that's what we need to do here too. We need to, okay, we know what's going on. We know what we need to do. We pretty much, pretty much all of us at this point, if you haven't looked into it, you should know what you need to be doing for yourself and for your family. Uh, it isn't going out and emptying the grocery stores, although they're doing an incredible job of restocking, as I knew they would, um, and getting things going. Uh, I was not prepared. I, I'm the first to admit it. I just moved, and part of my move was to get rid of everything, all of my pantries, everything in the fridges and freezers. And so as I moved into the new location, which we just closed a week, well, March, what, what day was it? March 7th. Or, no, that's not, uh, whatever day it was, March, beginning of March, first week of March. Um, so I, like a whole lot of people, wasn't prepared with a lot of stuff, but I didn't go out and panic. And part of why I didn't go out and panic, I'll be honest, is because I can't drive, right? I have legally blind and I can't go out and drive and go to the stores and clean it out. Not that I would have anyway, but I would have probably gotten my usual weekly things like fruits and vegetables and meat and, you know, snacks and things to have in the house. But uh, I, I didn't do that. Now, um, I believe that everything works out and everything the universe will you know, survive, whether I have my ducks in a row or not. I actually have ducks in a row here, just as a, as a metaphor. Plus, I love these little ducks. And my granddaughter and I, one of the cool things that we're doing, we actually brainstormed a list of, of things we could do over the next month to, to be positive and fun. And one of them is organize all the toys and all the crafty type stuff and find things around the house that we could use for projects and activities and crafty things. So it's a really cool time to get super creative and use your imagination to find things that you can do instead of focusing on, oh, I can't go snowboarding because the snowboarding places are closed. I can't go to the theater. I can't go to the bar or the restaurant. I can't go out to dinner, so what can I do? Well, I can still go get takeout and I can make a fun family picnic or I can still do whatever, fill in the blank and make sure you're doing those things. Um, that's an example of getting your ducks in a row. <clears throat> um, so lost my train of thought as I am known to do so roll with the punches how can you roll with the punches and make sure you're only dealing with your own personal punches that's my biggest one don't live vicariously through other people in a negative way you know whenever we go to a movie or read a book it's human nature to put ourselves in that story make sure you're staying in your own story and writing your own story and not putting yourself in other people's stories and worrying about other cities and other things and other situations that may or may not ever come to pass where you are. Focus on what you can do, not on what you can't do. Um, what else is going on? Day four of the Countdown to the Live Challenge Workshop. Live Challenge Workshop's on Monday. I am excited because that is something that I can do to help people move forward in a positive way, no matter what their situation was. And I am thinking and tweaking how I was gonna do it given the current situation, right? Uh, <clears throat> my intention was to lead people into, of course, a, my program, my program of coaching, which is probably more important than ever that people need things like that going forward, especially if their business is in trouble or if they're in a business that's been shut down totally. And there's been a lot of businesses that are just, hey, you need to shut your doors and go home. Everybody needs to go home for this period of time. <clears throat> and I have to say, you know, Shame on us if we'd been more compliant, if we'd taken it seriously and done it sooner, if we'd actually done what we were told, governors and states and the federal government wouldn't have to be mandating that we do these things. And I, you know, I, I'm, I went through town on, on Friday and was horrified at how many people were out at the bars and restaurants, right? It was in Friday and Saturday. It was just like a regular Friday and Saturday night downtown in my small town. And that's part of the problem, right? <clears throat> is that you know we didn't necessarily immediately take it seriously and when we don't take it seriously on an individual level then or we don't do the right thing we knew it was the right thing i mean given that we don't have the information we know that social distancing is like one of the only things that each of us actually has the ability to do we can do it it might not be fun 
it might not be the thing we want to do because we want to be involved in our runaround lives, running around like chickens with our heads cut off all the time, being so busy that we never actually have to think about or pay attention to what our lives really are like. And now we're going to, we're going to do that. We're going to do the hard work of creating the life that we want, right? So look for people and resources that can help you do that. Again, off on a tangent. Anyway, day four was all about getting down to the root cause of a problem. And then once you identify that problem, turn your focus 100% to solutions. So the root cause of this problem might be the coronavirus has shut my business down. What am I going to do now? Number one, I need to make money to provide for myself and my family. Number two, what what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I, I wasn't set up for this. You know what? Most people in this country and most businesses in this country were not and are not set up for this. So no shaming or beating people up saying, oh, well, you should have prepared for this. Yeah, no, you couldn't have imagined this or prepared for this in most industries. And you couldn't have predicted. So, you know, the pompous people that are saying, well, you should have known and you should have prepared better and you should have planned for this and had contingencies. Yeah, you can have contingency plans, but I guarantee any contingency plan that I ever created for any of the businesses that I've ever had, including corporate America, never included a, a, a nationwide shutdown of entire industries, right? Or entire businesses. And it just, it didn't include that. So even me, who is big on contingency plans and what if scenarios and being prepared, I was an totally unprepared for this. Now, maybe my going online from offline in the last couple of years helped to prepare me, but it wasn't really a conscious decision for, oh my God, if, if the world has a catastrophe, this is what I'm doing. It definitely wasn't conscious. It was because I wanted more freedom and I wanted more um, opportunity to do what I want, when I want, where I want, wearing what I want with whomever I want so that I could work in my robe and in my pajamas if I wanted to, instead of having to put on my suit and going to corporate America instead of having to go to a physical business every single day and creating and I, and I love manufacturing I love making things and creating things and manufacturing but it required for the most part although I did create the four-hour work week in the tiny food business it did require for the most part that I physically be present at least on some frequency so I had done it not for oh doom and gloom something bad might happen someday i had done it for i wanted to change my lifestyle and this will definitely create a massive influx of lifestyle changes for for the majority of us right most of us are going to be changing our lifestyles definitely for the short term but for the long term after that we're going to find out guess what we really like the people in our family we really love our kids and we want to do more things with them and spend more time with them we want to, to, to say okay well instead of having five after school activities why don't we just have two or three or or maybe just one thing that you really love and care about you know do we have to spend all of our time running 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 through our life and and I look back I mean I ran totally through my kids lives my kids growing up years and that's why I'm actually excited about and enjoying spending this year with my granddaughter spending this year hanging out with her we were already hanging out we're just hanging out for a little longer every day now than we were before with her out of school but I am trying to maintain the structure of that and we're doing some things every day to work on the things that she would be learning in her school time her school days and I would say if your kids are school age make sure that you are keeping not all the structure but some of the structure and keeping up with the things that they would be learning if they were in school hey we got the internet nowadays there's no excuse for not googling topics or research a lot of schools I'm sure sent work home with kids and books home with kids or you can get them online and stay a little bit caught up but don't let you know boredom and being lazy and not wanting to do anything and, and feeling sorry for ourselves keep us from doing the things that we continue continue to do that will make us feel better make us feel good and will make the time fly I guarantee if you've got a lot of activities and you're keeping busy this time will go by really really fast no matter how bad your situation we're, we'll be okay through it um, if you need help with that if you've got any questions just ask in the comments below um, I might not know the answer but I will help you find it um, to make sure that we're all helping one another to get through this amazingly bizarro time I guess I can't even think of another word besides bizarro and un unprecedented unbelievable right none of us I could never have imagined this I guess some filmmakers could have because they've written some weird movies about it but for the most part no um, that's it that's all I've got today go out make it an awesome day take care of yourself take care of each other and if I can help you in any way just ask and I will
will be in touch. Take care and otherwise join us in the live challenge workshop. I guarantee it can help absolutely anybody in whatever situation you're in. It was originally designed for business owners and I would anticipate it's still going to be geared toward business owners because um, business owners are the people that make the world go round and they're going to need help. And I know if I were in this situation um, a couple of years ago, I would be feeling the pinch a lot more than I am right now. And so I want to use what I can and do what I can to help the business owners because the business owners are the people that employ the people that are really struggling because they don't have a job right now and they don't have an income. So that's it. Have an awesome day and I will of course be with you tomorrow.